10 things you should know before you go and buy some expensive golf clubs. Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. It's Simon down here at Burford Golf Club and today we're going to be talking about what you need to know when you want to buy some expensive golf clubs. As a club fitter myself, I feel like if the people that came to a club fitting session knew these 10 things, A, it would make my job easier and B, it would make their experience better. So, let's get into my top 10 tips for buying these certain golf clubs. Number one, is probably the most important point of this video. So if you made it this far, congratulations. You don't need expensive golf clubs to play the game of golf. Number two kind of merges into number one as that even though a fitted set of golf clubs will help your game, improve your game, um, and get a desired shot that you might be after more, it's not gonna be the sole cure. If you slice the ball, you're still gonna slice it, just maybe less. And if anyone tells you that they can give you a club that's gonna make the ball go straighter, further, different shape all the time, then they are purely lying to you. Run out the door, do not buy that golf club. Number three is that if you go and buy a golf club online purely because you've seen an advert or you've read a bit of spill underneath it, just don't do it. Technology has moved on so far that I can fit you into a set of golf clubs that are 10 years old that are going to be better for you than something that might be this year's current equipment. It's all about getting the right numbers, the right impact factors when you hit that golf ball that's going to help improve your golf. It just so happens that we can't fit easily for secondhand stuff and obviously it's a lot easier for us to fit for the brand new equipment coming out this year. Number four is drivers and again following on the last topic. Ball speed off a driver face has gone up marginally year on year, if not negligible. So if you've got a driver that's five years old, for example, it's more than likely your swing has changed over those five years for the reason that that driver is now not working for you and going and getting fitted for a new driver and all of a sudden you're getting 30 more yards is because you've now been fitted correctly into a proper shaft and head combination. It's not purely down to that head. So you can go through the trial and error of buying loads of different secondhand clubs, for example, which is definitely a lot more cost effective. Or if you go and get fitted for a driver, it's more down to that fitter's done a good job in terms of putting the right shaft and head for you and that particular day that's given you those extra yards. Number five is irons and to be perfectly honest when you're buying a new set of irons what do you want from them because as a club fitter you've only got so much to work with. If you want a sleek looking bladed head you're not going to get any more distance out of it. They've become slightly more progressive and forgiving over the years however when it comes down to pure loft and moving that CG back, i.e. having a bigger head, that is how you get distance. And then at the very end of the spectrum, you've got blades, which is maximum control and higher loft, and you're gonna get less distance, but more control. So just ask yourself, is the set you're using at the moment too short for you? If it is, then you're probably looking for maybe a graphite or a bigger headed iron going forward regardless of the technology or what they say the technology does for you. Obviously getting a right fitted suited set of irons for you is gonna help your iron play and help that shot shape that you want, but you can't have both. You can't have blades and distance and at the same time, you can't have that big head distance and the control that you might be wanting for a bit of shot shaping ability. Getting wedges, faux keys, mac daddies, whatever it is, don't just go and buy a set of numbers from your pitching range. Don't go and just get a 54, a 58, and a 62, whatever it is, because you wanna make sure you're hitting these wedges 
certain distances. You're more than likely got a forgiving or cavity back iron in your set and now you're pretty much going straight to a blade. So there's no reason why you can't have pitching wedge in your set and a pitching wedge in one of these Vokey wedges. Because if you hit your pitching wedge 110 and all of a sudden you go and get a 54 degree Vokey wedge and you hit it 70 yards, you've now got a 40 yard gap you can't work with. So please make sure you know and don't just listen to the numbers. If you're getting fitted for them, don't be afraid to have two clubs in the bag that do essentially the same loft, the same thing, but you're gonna have more confidence in hitting those distances, especially when you're trying to hit a 90 yard wedge shot with a Vokey. It's gonna be a lot easier if you've got a lot more, or less loft, I should say, and you can press that ball a bit better. Number seven, swing changes. Where are you in at the moment when you're coming to get fitted or buying a new set of irons. If you're in a series of lesson, a three month program, or you've got a goal to reach, then just wait. Wait to the end, wait till you've ingrained a swing. If you just started the game of golf, maybe hold off getting fitted. Maybe just keep practicing, get consistent to the point that you can hit a seven iron eight to 10 times consistently on a decent line, for example. I'm not saying perfect, but on a decent line that someone can work with. If you're hitting it top, you're fat, off to the right, off to the left, just hold off a bit. Wait a bit of time, get a bit of practice in. On the other side, if you've obviously been playing golf for 40, 50 years, you're gonna to wanna to get fitted for something that's definitely suited to your swing. You're not gonna be changing much, you're not gonna be working on your swing much, all you wanna do is go out and enjoy it. So you've got two sides of the spectrum. Make sure you let the night go, a guy that's fitting you know this at the start, that I'm having lessons. You should ask you if he's any good. I'm having lessons, or actually I just want a set that's built for me, because there's no point getting a set that's specifically built for that swing on that particular day if you're going to change it in a month because all of a sudden that fitted set for you is then going to be completely wrong pay to get fitted don't just get it free unless like for example the members up at our golf club here at Burford we fit for free because they're the members but if a visitor came and get club fitted we would charge for it the sole reason for that and I suggest you do this for you is because you don't feel pressured in buying the clubs on that particular day you can go spend an hour, pay the guy for his time, for example, and then you can walk away guilt-free, not pressured in, go away and then maybe come back in a week and they'll more than likely take that fee off the clubs that you were to buy. Too many times have I seen people going for free club fits, they get to the end of it, they feel guilty the guy spent an hour or an hour half with them and they go and spend £900 on a set of irons or drivers or whatever it is purely because they feel pushed into it. Go and pay from a reputable club fitting, and they'll give you the specs that you'll need. They'll probably price match whatever's out there online anyway. Um, and yeah, that's honestly the best advice I could possibly give you, because it's gonna save you a lot more money in the long term, and also you know you're gonna get the right equipment for you. Be aware of what your clubs currently are worth. Now, if you've got really old clubs, I'm talking 20 years old, then you go get nothing for them. But, for example, if you bought clubs that are eight years old, something like that, and you're getting a new set of clubs, so find out what they're worth and see if the guy will trade them in. See if you get a decent value for your clubs. So many times people that are trading their irons are actually worth 200, 250 quid because they've kept their value because they're a decent set of irons, for example. So find out, go on Golf Bidder, go on Price Match, whatever it is, and find out what your clubs are worth. And if you're going to sell it separately yourself or trade it into the guy, at least you know where you're starting with the value of the club. Um, and then again that's going to take and save you a bit of money on the new clubs that you're going to get for the future number 10 is please subscribe now <laughs> check <I'm joking. laughs> last one is demo days interesting because demo days back in the day were ways for golf clubs to have a flight monitor to have a large array of clubs whereas majority especially ourselves we have a vast array of different clubs and different manufacturers by all means go to demo days because they're going to be free and you're going to be able to try some new equipment however don't feel pressured in going and getting that particular club especially as you've only tried one manufacturer there's so many out there unless your heart's set, like dead set on a particular manufacturer then by all means go to a demo day they're going to have everything you can probably possibly imagine especially if you're left-handed demo days are great because again they've got the left-handed side but take a demo day as in the rep needs to get it in his calendar because he needs to do so many a year the golf club needs to take them on because they need to get so many in a year go and try it go and test it have a bit of fun for example but don't feel committed to actually buying anything on the day um, and by all means then go and try other clubs just to be sure so you know that you are buying the right clubs that are going to do the right job for you okay guys there is my top 10 for getting expensive golf clubs the last thing any club fitter wants is someone to walk away 
and not feel happy with what they have bought. That's the last thing, it's a lot of money and they put a lot of trust into you and that's why I want to make this video, I want to make sure that people in the future know that when they're going to buy expensive golf clubs, which isn't a bad thing, if you want to go and treat yourself, if you love the game, then by all means do it, I've done it, loads of people do it, but make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and make sure that you get that particular set that's going to last you for the next 10 to 15 years. Guys, thank you ever so much for watching, as I said in number 10, please subscribe and I'll catch you guys there.